Okay, so in the last video, we drew all our lines, we double checked for accuracy, we measured everything to make sure we're good to go. And in today's video, we're gonna do our rip cuts. So we're gonna make a small cut right on the edge just to make sure our board is 11 and 1 8 inches wide. It might already be that, so we might not actually cut anything, that's okay. And our second cut is gonna be nine, which is gonna make this uh, rip cut here, the lines that we drew, the double lines, that one will definitely cut. So um, you're gonna take your board, you're gonna bring it to the first table saw over here. And then we're gonna check a couple of things first before we, we turn it on and make our cut to make sure everything is set correctly. First, obviously we're clearing stuff off. Uh, second, we're gonna lift this guard up, which is okay to do as long as the saw's not running. And then we're going to check the blade height. Okay, so uh, that blade height seems to be just perfect for what we're trying to do. The teeth are just above the wood. Okay, so that is adjustable. So with uh, other classes, other sections, other more advanced levels of woods, somebody might be bringing that up and down. So we do wanna check that. If it's too low, it won't cut all the way through the board and our board will actually run into this uh, splitter here and we'll, it'll get stuck. It won't be able to go through. So we gotta make sure that blade cuts all the way through the part. So that looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, the blade can also be tilted at an angle. We'll be doing that later, uh, but again, Woods 2 and Woods 3 and stuff might do that as well. So if you look down here, this should be set pretty close to zero. Hopefully you can see that little uh, red line mark, marked to zero there. So if you see that, if this looks pretty square, straight up and down, you should be ready to go. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the fence. Hopefully you can see this pretty well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our first cut at 11. So here's 11, and we're going to go to 1 8th. Okay, now this ruler is in 30 seconds uh, up to the first foot. So if you look here, these tiny, tiny little lines, those are 30 seconds. And to make things extra confusing, after a foot goes, this ruler simplifies and then goes to 16th. And then this, to make things even worse, this uh, gauge is zoomed in, it's bubbled. So, you know, the how tight and small those lines, they don't look that small in this thing. So this is a very common mistake. People accidentally set it to 11 sixteenths because they think, okay, 1 16th, 2 16th, and 8th, but that's actually 30 seconds. So we will go to 11 and 1 8th, okay? So again, that's probably the most difficult dimension you guys gotta find in this class. So we got that. Okay, uh, another reason why we drew the lines is so we could also do this too, okay? Um, you know, to check it. Now, again, it looks like my board's gonna be okay. We're not gonna have to cut much to get to 11 and 8th, but that looks like we've got it set in pretty good. We'll double check those lines on dimensions for our nine, then we'll actually get pencil line to that to prove that, okay? Uh, debris is clear, we're clear, everything looks good to turn on the saw, make a cut. You know, we'll talk about where we're gonna stand over here, so. To make a rip cut, you are gonna put your hip up against the machine. This will maximize your reach and it will stabilize you, kind of just make you sturdy here so you got uh, just a point to rest on, okay? And then as we go through the part, again, I can do this because it looks like we're not actually gonna cut anything on this cut, but uh, it stabilizes you to get your reach out. Now, you will run out of reach. Um, and so what do you do? Because one of the rules that you have to follow is that you have to keep two hands on the board at all times. And when you run out of reach, you're inevitably gonna have to move that right hand. And what I don't want you to do is to lift your hand as the board keeps progressing. You're letting go of the board, that's dangerous. You can get a kickback when that happens. The board can twist. And we watched a video on how uh, bad things happen when a board twists into a blade. So what I want you to do, I'll try to back this up here. A Couple of safety features here preventing that, that's good. Okay, so uh, you're gonna use what I call the inchworm technique, okay? So where you're gonna send it through, and when you run out of room, you're gonna do fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, both hands on the board all the way through. And you can see what my left hand is doing, pretty easy job, it's just pushing the board through, okay? So let's back this up again, talk about one more thing. So we talked about hand technique, 
And what this right hand is doing with this constant pressure is that it's pushing down and it's putting pressure tight on the fence. So I want this board to stay tight against this fence the entire time. If this board starts shifting, you know, we talked about how that's dangerous, a twist in the blade can cause a kickback, but also this blade is straight. It's parallel with this fence. If this board is crooked, this will still be straight and then this will be crooked. That's not gonna be a square cut. You're not gonna be happy with that. So um, this hand has a lot to do. It's gonna be putting constant down pressure so it's not gonna be tipping or tipping, okay? And it's also gonna keep it tight against the fence. So what I don't wanna see is an air gap here and I don't wanna see an air gap down here, tight against the fence. So that's really where your eyes are gonna be focused. Your two eyes are gonna be here and here, okay? Uh, don't worry about the blade and how it looks when it's cutting. That's a cloudy guard. You can't see that anyway. Keep your eyes focused right here throughout the cut, okay? So to turn it on, we're gonna pull this red paddle out. We're gonna send the board through. Um, I or somebody will be on the other side helping catch this first cut for you. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you'll see me how I have to, I'll have to awkwardly reach over there and hold it, but um, you guys won't have to do that. I'll be there catching that for you. So pull the red paddle out to start it and we'll push it in to turn it off. Always remember that in case of an emergency, keep your hands, a hand, at least one hand on the board in an emergency to turn it off. You definitely, you know, if something goes wrong, don't just let go of the board. That could, again, cause a kickback. So anyway, here we go. We're gonna pull the red paddle. We're gonna focus here. That's where our eyes are gonna be. Good down pressure, good pressure against the fence. It doesn't look like we're gonna get much cut on this one, that's okay. Again, my eyes are looking right along the edge of that fence, making sure things are nice and square. Now, I'm out of reach. So I'm gonna do fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, keeping that board tight against the fence, flat against the table. Okay, now I would be there to catch that for you, but since I can't do that for myself, I'll reach. Okay, so that was the first quote unquote cut. Again, this one didn't cut because this board was narrow enough. So we're ready for rip cut number two. Now we gotta set the fence to nine. So that one's a lot easier. We just find the big line next to the nine. You can see I'm lifting this handle up to make adjustments. Once I get it, I lock it down. Now that, now it's rigid. It's not gonna slide around on us, okay? Now I'm gonna make two boards. This is gonna be a little harder for me to catch. Uh, maybe I'll do this. Good example here. There we go. Hopefully that is set to the right height to catch the boards for me. We'll see. Okay, now I'm set to nine. Now I can actually see if my pencil lines are gonna help me. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't wanna touch that blade, so I'll use the board to move it a bit, but I can see those teeth, the silver parts, are lined up right with my pencil line. Hopefully you guys can see that too. Okay, so uh, the fence is set to nine, which I trust. This, we, we get this dialed in really good and it seems to stay that way. But it's also good to have another second, second check there. So this looks like this is gonna work out. Okay, same technique. And again, I'll be on the other side to help catch that for you, but notice where I was positioned. My hip was up against the machine, so I was stabilized. Uh, I was not in this kickback area. So again, if something were to happen, I would have been okay. Um, the margin of safety was four inches, so I was beyond four inches both times. So using my hands was okay. I didn't have to go to the push sticks. So uh, that's it. You're gonna use both of these boards uh, for your project. We've got our two stretchers that are gonna be here. Uh, and then we've got our top, our leg, and our other leg. And so this will be scrap, which actually makes for a really good sanding block. You might want to hold on to that. And then this will be scrap. That'll just get cut away. So uh, that's the, the rip cuts. You're done with rip cuts for now. The next step in the next video is going to be doing all of your cross cuts. So we'll, we'll cover that next.